Meat Boy is back. Today we are going to do my healthy take on classic barbecue short ribs. So this isn't necessarily going to be a purely carnivore recipe, uh, but if you guys are keto or just want to follow a healthy nutrient dense diet that is free from the negative aspects of our modern food supply, that is also nutrient dense, full of the vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids that our bodies need, this will definitely fit. And this is certainly something you can do on a, a cheat day or even something that you can eat every day, uh, especially something more approachable to give to the kids. So let's take a look at the ingredients. As with any meat-based recipe, the most important ingredient is the meat and the quality of that meat. So today I'm using our first light 100% grass-fed Wagyu short ribs that we have on Frankie Sea Range Meat. And the reason I like short ribs so much as a cut in general is because it's one of the principally fatty cuts of an animal. So even if you're getting grass-fed, it will still have a lot of fat. You know, normally if you're buying a ribeye from a grass-fed animal, it might be very lean. Whereas certain cuts like the ribs, the brisket, the belly, you know, the suet fat, the marrow, certain parts of the animal always have fat. Short ribs is one of them, you know, go to a local farm, butcher, these will probably be pretty cheap, pretty affordable, and they really are delicious. So let's take a look at these. Now Wagyu doesn't just mean higher marbling. No, Wagyu animals specifically have more tender meat. And that's very important for cuts like short rib and belly. You know, whereas normally a short rib is very tough, you know, I don't normally cook these low and slow like I do today. You know, sometimes I just throw these on the grill for a few minutes on each side and they come out really, really delicious. Uh, so if you get these on Frankie Sea Range Meat, this is how they will come. Uh, this is 12 pounds, so each of these short ribs are about six pounds. And, you know, I would literally eat this for a week. So, you know, it's a one week supply of short ribs. You know, you'll get plenty of fat, plenty of nutrition from these. And, and the marbling is the main difference here. You know, you could see, you know, crazy, crazy marbling. You're not going to see that on on regular short ribs. So, you know, not only do we have more tender meat, there is ample intramuscular marbling on these short ribs. Uh, so definitely try these out if you guys want, but you know, any short rib from a local farm, super, super delicious. This is just gonna be a slight step up. So all I really wanna do here is just pat the meat a little bit dry with the ever so valuable paper towels that we can't come by. You don't necessarily have to pat the meat dry, I just put a little more salt and pepper on there. Uh, what I would do is if you break open this package, definitely get a marinade on the other rack of short ribs. You know, hey, just put some salt and pepper on it. Let it sit for a couple days. You know, develop that flavor, maybe some honey. But uh, once you guys take a look at the barbecue sauce we're making today, uh, you can even put some of that on the second pair of short ribs. So the total cook time for these ribs is going to be between four and five hours. The first few hours are just going to be salt and pepper, and we're going to baste it with red wine vinegar. So if you don't want to use barbecue sauce, if you want to keep this recipe, you know, 100% carnivore, you can just do that. Salt, pepper, baste with red wine vinegar. Very simple. What we're going to do is get this in the oven with the salt and pepper, and then I'll show you guys the barbecue sauce. So very simply, you know, two parts pepper to one part salt and you wanna put the salt on first. So we'll get a thin layer of salt on the ribs and then plenty of black pepper. And you know, I'm sure some of you guys have heard about Franklin's Barbecue, which is a, a very famous Texas barbecue joint. This is his recipe. And these Wagyu ribs are so delicious. I would go as far as to say, don't even touch a barbecue sauce, but I know how some kids are. I know some people are very picky. So, you know, the barbecue sauce is definitely optional. So same with the other side. And we just get a nice thin layer of salt on here. So we got the salt on and we'll do the same thing. Pepper on this side. So this is all seasoned. Let's pop it in the oven. So the temperature is 275. And we're going to pop this in. You know, every 45 minutes to one hour, we're going to baste it with red wine vinegar just to keep it moist. And the vinegar, the acidity is very important for cutting through all of that fat. You know, especially with a cut like short ribs, you definitely want some acidity. So if any of you guys are familiar with a classic barbecue sauce recipe, you know, they're ketchup based, they'll have a lot of brown sugar or regular sugar in there. You'll have some mustard powder, paprika, some type of vinegar. And I took some of those ingredients, 
and I swapped them out for carnivore versions or higher quality versions. You know, so here I have, you know, organic ketchup instead of regular ketchup. Here I have fish sauce instead of Worcestershire sauce. You know, here we have an organic red wine vinegar. Uh, you know, this is a high quality smoked paprika. This is a high quality French mustard instead of mustard powder. You know, here we have some raw honey instead of brown sugar. So, you know, more expensive, much higher quality. You know, it's gonna have more nutrition, be less inflammatory, and ultimately taste better. So the first ingredient is one cup of raw honey. And this doesn't really have to be raw because, you know, it is gonna be cooked in the oven. At least some of it is. So whatever, you know, barbecue sauce is gonna be off to the side that you might put on the ribs afterwards. I guess if you wanna keep the honey in that raw, not too significant of a difference though. One cup of raw honey we want, one and a half cups of our organic ketchup. And I I've made ketchup before. Uh, honestly, just, you know, get a bottle of organic stuff and save yourself some time. If you're gonna eat ketchup and you really wanna make it, you can give it a shot, but you know, this is only a few dollars and a lot less work. The only problem with buying really high quality expensive ingredients is like if you leave this much stuff in here, this is probably like a dollar worth of honey and ketchup. So then we're gonna do half a cup of our red wine vinegar. You could use apple cider vinegar. You could really use any vinegar. I think the classic recipe calls for white vinegar. Now we want about four tablespoons of mustard. Yeah, that's enough. Now you want one tablespoon of fish sauce. This is actually a colatura di Alisi. I've been trying to get this on Frankie's Strange Meat for you guys. It's pretty much anchovy fish sauce. They're very salty, lots of umami flavor, really delicious stuff. Uh, this is substituting the worst of shear that normally goes in barbecue sauce. Now I want two teaspoons of paprika. Just two teaspoons of salt. Two tablespoons of black pepper. So that is our barbecue sauce. Give this a little taste. That's pretty good stuff. Now when I taste this, I think of that classic ketchup-based barbecue sauce. You know, there's definitely a lot of room for experimenting, but you know, this is really close to what you would traditionally expect at any barbecue place, just much higher quality. Barbecue sauce is done, ribs are in the oven. We're going to baste them with red wine vinegar every 45 minutes for about three hours. And at the three hour mark, we're gonna start putting the barbecue sauce on the short ribs. So I'm actually gonna take half of this barbecue sauce and I'm gonna marinate the other short rib with it. You know, I think this is, you know, too much barbecue sauce for one short rib. So, you know, this will preserve this and also give it the flavor, you know, for next time. So it's been about an hour. You know, the top of this is drying out a little bit. So what we wanna do, red wine vinegar on this to keep it moist. Just rub that on. And then normally you'll see them use like a spritz bottle for this, but you know, this isn't something I make that often. So I don't have vinegar in a spritz bottle. So we're gonna flip this over to the other side. Put some vinegar on that side as well. Just rub it in. This is gonna go back in for another hour and then we'll baste it again. So it's been another hour. We're just gonna put some more red wine vinegar on the ribs. All right, we got both sides. So back in the oven, another hour, another 45 minutes, one last baste. Again, the main goal is just to make sure that the ribs don't dry out. Because if you do this without spraying this with water or vinegar, these will get very dry on the surface. All right, so back in the oven. Maybe like 25, 30 more minutes and then we will get the barbecue sauce on it. Total cook time so far has been about three hours. So it's time to put the barbecue sauce on. Normally you would take the ribs and wrap them in foil with the barbecue sauce surrounding it. But since aluminum foil is toxic, you know, you don't want aluminum in your food or anywhere near it. And I don't really have a substitute right now. We're just gonna pour the barbecue sauce on top of this and just let it go for another two hours. It's gonna be about the same. So just a little bit on top, put the rest on this side. Very important that the meat side of the ribs is down. Push that sauce to the, to the bottom of the pan surrounding the meat on the bottom. And then we'll just put the rest on top. There was a little bit of fat and meat juice at the bottom here that I just poured off, but it wasn't like a super significant amount. So you could, you could just leave that in there if you want. You know, so our ribs are coated nicely. You know, the bottom of the ribs are sitting in barbecue sauce. There's plenty of barbecue sauce on top of here. Now we're gonna go back in the oven for an hour and a half, two hours, and we'll be done. Five hours later, the masterpiece is complete. So now these have to rest for about half an hour, uh, just so they're cool enough to eat. 
Don't stay at my place. I don't have insurance. But down the knife, Frank. All right, boys. We have Keep our meat all pulled off. Life. And I'm Gina, Frank's sister. Hi, and YouTube did you, viewers. Did you decide on a nickname yet? I'm Meat Boy. They weren't really a fan of Sausage Girl. What's a, do you have a better nickname idea? I'm Meat Woman. All right, that works. Meat Woman. You want me to eat that actually off the bone? So we have the inside of the rib is nice and juicy and red. That actually looks really, really, really good. Do you want me to see? That's uh, really good. That looks I'm going to cut a piece off for Gina. Oh, so I'm not going to eat the whole thing? You can have more later if you want. Oh, trust me, I'm hungry so much. Hey. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is pretty good. I like this a lot. It's so good. The sauce is perfect. Unfortunately, I only have good looks and not the cooking gene like my brother. So you can imagine. So if you were gonna serve this, you would just like cut all the meat off the bone. And, and it should really just pull off pretty easily. And then you should be left with like a clean bone. So you take a plate of the chopped up short rib. I would just spoon some more of the barbecue sauce on top. I would just eat the sauce straight up. It's so good. She, she's not really like, she's not a big meat eater. Like she doesn't really like steak, but. But I do like my ribs. And I do like pork. I like chicken. And I'm gonna take a bite right in front of the camera here. So just to describe this from a culinary perspective, for ribs, it's super, super juicy, super, super tender. Mm. Uh, you know, the temperature in the oven, the long cooking time, plus it's Wagyu with a lot of marbling. I think if you use regular short ribs mm. that you wouldn't get nearly as good of a result, but you guys should definitely try this out regardless. Mm. If you do have a smoker, I would definitely use the smoker instead. I just use the oven because I figured most of you guys don't have a smoker and it is raining outside today. Yeah, so good. What do you think, Gina? Mm -hmm. So if you have kids who don't like meat or you just want to try something different, definitely give this recipe a shot. As I said earlier, you guys can get that Wagyu short rib on frankiesfreerangemeat.com. If you guys do want to support me further, there's also a bunch of other stuff down in the comments. Of course, guys, please like the video subscribe, mm -hmm. hit that bell icon, and uh, share the video if you can. Guys, let us know down in the sad. comments if there are uh, any other recipes you guys would like mm. to see for next Saturday. Say bye to everyone. Bye, here. bye.